With that, I'd like to introduce our panelists, Terry Dumas, the VP of Marketing for Rad Lighting, and John Burke, President of Kirby Risk Electrical Supply. John. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, as I look around the room this morning, I'm, I'm pleased to see that we have a number of manufacturers here. When I put this scorecard together, I had no idea who would be here. But I can tell you that one of you in the room actually owns this scorecard, so pay particular attention, <laughs> especially to the areas where you have some improvement to make. <laughs> what we'd like to do this morning is to share with you some of the details and the merits of, of what can be accomplished by using a scorecard to better manage the partnership and also the multiple investments that you make, not only for Kirby Risk, but also for uh, the entire uh, distribution community within the industry. Uh, we view the scorecard as a, as a gateway to collaboration and also the business planning. And you'll see as we roll through the slides how the scorecard measurement provides a window for key areas of our business and how it provides an opportunity for improving our mutual transaction efficiency. And it also increases our visibility from a B2B standpoint. And finally, it calibrates the results of our business interface. Scorecard elements, and the way we like to view it, is it really begins with, with business alignment. And what business alignment is for us, it's a view of how we're, how we're interfacing at the functional, the actual touch point level of the business. We then move into the financial area with key business measurements. It looks at adjusted gross margin. Uh, it looks at uh, asset performance and, and the impact in that particular area. And then finally, the sketch, and the sketch is a one-page communication tool, and the tool really highlights areas such as where do we need to improve, how do we summarize uh, uh, the business alignment aspects of, of the uh, scoring, and it also summarizes the financial aspects. And then it provides a look at mutual areas where we've made key investments and we have key initiatives. The alignment is an approach that we use, and it's, uh, it gives our employees really a voice in the business, and it, uh, and it gives you a view of what they see from, uh, from their key functional area of the business. So uh, their approach is to look at things like ease of doing business, service capabilities, they look at resource support, and then they look at transactional uh, opportunities. And then from, from there, each functional area scores the performance of, of each vendor. And then they provide supporting documentation. So if there's any questions, we can drill down to, to that particular level. Not, not only a score, but there's an opportunity now, because we look at the top 30 vendors that Kirby Risk does business with. So we, we have a score for the particular manufacturer, but we also rank that manufacturer against the top 30. This is a typical scorecard format. If you look at the lower left-hand corner, you'll see that there are key functional areas of the business. And these are the areas that are involved in, in doing the scoring. Uh, each, each representative uh, in that bottom left-hand corner has the opportunity to develop the actual questions that are used as part, part of the scorecard. Then the survey is conducted, and we try to do it at least twice a year. And that's typically around a meeting like this, NAD or an, or an AD, AD meeting, and that tends to keep the comments fresh. This represents a closer view. Uh, it's the same scorecard related to business alignment, but it gives you an idea to see some of the questions, uh, the types of questions that we, that we ask. Uh, the, uh, the scores are done on a scale of one to five. One is failing. The scores are weighted to provide enough bandwidth in each category so you can differentiate between the manufacturers because there are 30 being scored. Scores are then summarized. Vendors are ranked by each category. For example, if you look at this one, the EDI rank is one, but the accounting rank is 30. The overall, the overall rank in this particular case is uh, for business alignment for this manufacturer is 13. The next area that we look at is, is financial, and this gets into a lot more detail. This area starts with it's more or less a modified P&L format, because it, it starts with sales, it looks at ticket margin, 
and then it looks at various uh, uh, impacts that we have to the gross margin rate, so the <coughs> adjustments that are made to the gross margin. The variance is, is looked at on a year-over-year -year basis, and the emphasis is placed on things that we call enhancers or detractors, and I'll talk about that a little bit. It's not meant to be, not meant to be an ABC drill down, so it's not an activity-based cost drill down, but it's an approach that, that takes us in that direction. The focus is on key metrics. We look at fill rate, shipments to complete, days to complete, and of course we look at the quality of the inventory. And again, vendor performance is, rate is ranked based on the top 30. This is a typical scorecard format for, for financial. You see the growth aspect, uh, profitability enhancers and detractors. Enhancers, and again, we don't drill to the, uh, uh, we don't go too deep. But we basically look at backside incentives, and we'll look at things like cash discounts, program support. This might be special programs, like we have a President's Club program, or it could be a program that's geared to focus on a particular uh, customer segment, like, like contractor. And then detractors. Uh, we look at unrecovered freight. We look at things like restocking charges. And then a thing called, called other. Uh, and some may think this is unfair, but when you add specialists to your business, it has an impact on the top line. When you add specialists to the, to the business, it's also an expense. So we look at uh, the amount of expense that's incurred if the manufacturer requires that we have a specialist on board. And then we roll it to a line that's, for lack of a better term, we call it pocket margin. Additional elements are pr pricing support, and this is really the indicator of, of uh, how strongly we're being supported by the manufacturer. We also try to do some so benchmarking within this time frame. So we're looking at uh, things like uh, uh, how do we stack up against our competition? Do we have a high enough percentage of SBAs? And then we roll down to things like inventory. So we give, a, give the manufacturer a heads up at that point. And uh, the heads up is what's coming, what's coming your way. Do we need to refresh the inventory? We could balance the inventory. These next charts are just four charts. We call them the quad charts. We're looking for trends here. These are the average days to, com to complete an order. And we're looking at both stock and non-stock material. The next one is the average shipments. This is an indication of supply chain issues and overall efficiency. Stock fill rate, uh, just what it says it is, but we do measure the dollars as well as the line items. And then EDI 810 invoice performance. This is, this is a very key area. These are all the electronic invoices. So they're stock invoices as well as direct. And the green line is, is everything that we receive electronically. Uh, so darn near 100% here. And then the, the blue line is uh, the times that the manu manual intervention was not required. So what are we really looking for? We're looking for the gap. And what is the gap? The gap is, is those situations where we don't have price or data synchronization, or we have lot billing. And then we roll the two financial scorecards together and uh, the score in this particular case, financial is 24, business alignment is 13, and this particular manufacturer gets an overall rank of 21, and that's 21 out of 30. Uh, typically, when you go below five, uh, everybody's pretty happy. When they get above five, they get quite emotional because we are a very competitive bunch, as I think you would agree. The last area is the sketch, and the sketch, again, is just a summary, but it's executive level. It rolls up the scorecard elements. It looks at the, the business alignment, the financial, and, and all programs that we participate in together, uh, mutual initiatives. <coughs> and then uh, some examples of that would be web store content, how we're participating together to get the attributed data and the images, VMI performance, new product launches, and things of, things of that nature. And then finally, uh, this is a look at the sketch. It's busy, but it's very effective. Uh, it quickly identifies the successes and the areas that need, need attention, and it gets the right people involved at the right time. This as a recap, we talked about business alignment that involves key functional areas of, of our business as they interface with your business. The financial addresses sales margin and asset management issues, and the sketch addresses our overall business relationship. The benefits of the scorecard, it's used as a catalyst for, for planning and collaboration. Scores are an indication of the effectiveness of our business relationship. The review leads to a, a drill down process and it's a driver for change and continuous improvement. It's a benchmarking tool used for discovery. 
And, and it provides a mechanism so we can measure the effectiveness of key distributor manufacturer investments. I think that's very important. And then last but, <clears throat> excuse me, last but, but, but not, not least, the scorecard must be delivered in the spirit uh, of, of continuous improvement. So if, if, if we do that, I think the results that we can deliver from that are gonna, will take us to a point where the scorecard truly is a means to an end, but it's not the end. The end is truly collaboration. 